How's it going everyone? Swanee and Cookie here with another Helldivers 2 update video. Now there's lots of interesting news to go over today. We actually ended up getting a small patch that fixed a few things. PlayStation had its earnings call which revealed some pretty interesting numbers and more. But first, as always, Cookie's going to give us an update on the major and personal orders. Yeah, so it's not looking good for the major order. We are way behind what is needed to finish this thing off, and it's borderline impossible that we finish it at this point. We've only managed to kill about 1.3 billion bots of the needed 2 billion, which means there's still 35% of the major order to go, and only one day to do it. It would be a Herculean effort, let me put it that way, uh, if, if we found a way to, to complete this major order. So it definitely looks like it's not going to happen, which which would mean technically no anti-tank mine unless the developers find another way to give it to us which they probably will and yeah, which uh definitely sucks because i'm itching for a new stratagem like I, I just want something new to play with either some new balancing changes or a new stratagem or some new ship module upgrades it's it's been a little while since this last war bond was kind of underwhelming it's just you know i have that itch for something more yeah, they could definitely use some new content right now, which, I mean, it's, it's weird to say that because they need so many fixes at the same time, which I guess is something else we're going to talk about later. They also really could use some new content to kind of distract from all the problems that have been coming out the last week or two. So, yeah, this is kind of a bummer for them too, but at the same time, they, they need to make sure that these major orders do come with risk. Like, if you fail, sucks to suck kind of thing. Like, that that's part of the deal. So if they just give us this stuff anyway... It, it's going to take away from the major orders too, which puts the devs and Joel in a pretty unfortunate spot. One of the reasons that this is probably happening has to do with obviously having less players playing the game, which has been a problem here very recently. The lowest concurrent players was released not too many days ago for the game overall since it came out. And somebody asked Twinbeard about this, asking what are we going to do if we don't have enough concurrent players to complete the major order? And he says, well, to put it bluntly, if we can't, it'll fail, as in this major order. We said before that one of the strengths with Helldivers 2 is that we don't micromanage the Galactic War short term. Feelings this back and forth tug of war creates is what feeds immersion. It's what makes it real and mean something. If we just steamrolled everything, it wouldn't be fun. Long term, if player numbers decline, we of course have to adapt major orders, but we don't want to be in there and poke around on an individual order basis. Which is interesting because there's a couple major orders that we have failed and they have affected the outcome of like if we are going to get new stratagems and stuff. So I do wonder how low the player numbers would have to get before they consider changing these major orders to make the goal a lot smaller and a lot easier to get to. Yeah, I do find it kind of ironic when they did this with the Terminids. I don't remember exactly what the number was for how many Terminids needed to be killed, but it got done like instantly. Like, I think it was 2 billion as well. But that was there was also that glitch going on where it was counting the whole team's kills and like multiplying it. They fixed that right. in this recent update. So now that got fixed and we're facing the bots. And there's significantly more Terminids that will come out in a given match than bots anyway. So that obviously makes a difference. And at that time, there was significantly more players. Player count definitely is down. And it definitely slowed up in the last couple of days. Like we were close to being on pace for a couple of days. And then after like Sunday, everybody just kind of gave up on it. There's far less involvement now. And now we're nowhere near getting this done. So next up, let's go over the personal order. It's pretty simple but it's going to take you at least three missions to complete and it's just simply extract from a successful mission three times so you you could always just bump it down to an easier difficulty and burn through it pretty quickly but it is going to take you at least three missions to complete today's personal order we also have a new patch that was just released this morning this patch is 01.000.304 it says in this patch we've made improvements and changes to the following areas just crash fixes and miscellaneous fixes as you can see here are the three crash fixes that it fixed so obviously like i say every time there's crash fixes always good to have more of those nobody wants to crash and that last one where fix for a rare crash when transitioning to or from the ship i literally just had that happen yesterday so definitely happy to have that one fixed and then there were a bunch of miscellaneous fixes we're only going to focus on a couple of these but i'll have all of them there on screen if you want to pause the video and take a look at them so the first one that we're going to look at is the optional account linking is now available in the account section of the in-game settings this is of course the extremely controversial account linking although now it is optional so if you want to link yourself to the playstation network you 
will have that option now. I just don't know what the point of doing so is. It's not like you get anything for doing it. I mean, it. if you really like the PlayStation Network and trust them, which nobody seems to, but I'm sure there's probably some people out there who think there's better security with it. So I mean, it'd be one thing if, if they had cross progression, like if I linked my account and then I could hop over on my PS5 and play there, but they don't have that yet. So I don't see a reason to link your account. Yeah, but if for some reason you do, you've got that option now. Also, Air Burst Proximity Explosion is now triggered only by enemies and hell divers. So this technically changes this gun a lot. This is a pretty big buff for that gun. I mean, they already tweaked it in a couple a couple patches ago and made it way better, but there was still some things that would blow it up a little too early. And I mean, if the only thing that triggers it now is hell divers and enemies, this might make it a lot better, like you said. So I'm definitely gonna have to test this out and just see how good it is. Yeah, it should at least massively decrease the amount of times you kill yourself with it. Like it would be pretty hard to do so or basically you would just kill yourself the same way you'd kill any of your teammates any other way like if you shot a rocket launcher right at your teammate right in front of you it would blow you up as well so yeah they basically pretty massive buff for not killing your teammates and the ar61 tenderizer now has the correct color scheme there were a lot of people complaining about how the color scheme did not look like it did in the trailer well that has now been fixed because apparently that was a mistake and with every patch there is a bunch of known issues i'm going to put that on screen so you guys can take a look at if you pause the video as well however there are a couple of these we are going to look at because i believe they are new to the known issues first of which being most weapons shoot below the crosshair when aiming down the sights this is one that was supposed to be fixed in the last patch and this is kind of them admitting it is not fixed right now yeah so that's unfortunate i know it's really bad for the anti-material rifle it feels like i'm always missing my shots when i use the anti-material rifle so they need to get this fixed pretty quickly because you can't shoot the anti-material rifle in third person it has to be in first person so you end up missing a lot of your shots they also have under here the ar61 tenderizer deals too little damage and is not in the final state we are intending this was also a major complaint coming out of the last war bond that the tenderizer is just really crappy so they are clearly saying that is not the way this gun was supposed to be deployed so it looks like they're going to be trying to buff that i would expect the next time they do a balancing patch which begs the question of, of like why even release the weapon like if they know that yeah. it's in a bad spot one it released with the wrong color scheme and two it released in a super weak state and they're aware of that so obviously this thing got pushed out the door way too soon if, if there's this many problems with it it's pretty clearly looking like this is pushed beyond air arrowhead at this point like these war bonds they have to come out once a month no matter what and they apparently either don't have the resources or time to be able to get these war bonds to come out the way they want them to especially that was very present in this last war bond and that's a problem they're gonna have to figure out i, I don't know exactly why they have to release them every month at that same time but that clearly seems to be the issue because it doesn't seem like they have the resources to do that yeah and if they keep releasing these war bonds in such a bad state people aren't going to look forward to the war bonds like there's nothing to get excited for if they release a war bond and every month the weapons are broken or they do too little damage so yeah they, they definitely need to get that worked out all right so next up sony just had their earnings call and with that they revealed some pretty big numbers for hell divers 2 uh, in fact hell divers 2 sold over 12 million copies in its first 12 weeks on sale making it playstation's fastest selling game of all time so that's crazy that's uh pretty good <laughs> Not bad. There's a lot of competition for PlayStation games, too. I, I'm kind of blown away by this. Yeah. I mean, we knew it was a huge release. We didn't get a lot of numbers because, you know, you couldn't track necessarily how many were getting bought on PlayStation. This is kind of one of the first times we've gotten a real definitive number to look at for how successful Helldivers 2 was. And, you know, it didn't disappoint. You know, for a game that's in this situation made by a very small studio and able to make a game this good, get that popular, it's a neat story. And and it's, it's kind of nice to see something positive. There's been a lot of negative things around Eldivers recently, so it's nice to remember just how successful this game has been. Yeah, and it really puts things into perspective now, too. When you look at, like, the Steam numbers of, like, the player counts of how many players are, there are active on the daily, there's, like, around, like, 100,000 players each day, and the fact that the Steam player base is a lot smaller than the PlayStation player base, but they were able to cause such an uproar that they got Sony to reverse that decision. A small chunk of the community and the grand scheme of things were able to make such a big change. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean it's quite a fan base Helldivers 2 has going for it. I really hope that they can keep you know that fan base going, even with all the recent issues. I hope this gets sorted out and we can start moving forward because it is really, really cool to see how 
concrete of a community that they have. And with this news, the CEO had this to say over on Twitter. He said, as announced in the Sony earnings call, we have sold over 12 million units. It's crazy to think that there are more Helldivers than there are Swedes. What a massive achievement from everyone involved and realizing Helldivers too. A massive thank you to the community for your support, passion, and dedication in the fight for democracy. All love. It's an outstanding achievement for Arrowhead, and I, I think regardless of how things have been going, they, they should be really proud of themselves for this game. And just the impact it's had, even for just these couple of months, has been pretty amazing to watch. And lastly, we wanted to talk about this reply from Twinbeard that we found particularly interesting. Someone said in the Discord, sorry for the ping, but I'd like to ask if there are plans to launch a test server for people to test out planned balances and content of any kind. And Twinbeard said, yes, there are similar plans. Exactly what, how, and when we don't know yet but we are discussing it so this would be a pretty big deal a lot of people have called for more testing before this stuff comes out and it comes out in a bad state this could be a way if if not to just get stuff not released in a bad state at least get stuff fixed faster mm -hmm. yeah there's a lot of games that do this actually i know bethesda games do it uh i know when i used to play fallout 76 they had a test server starfield has a test server those are just a couple examples but i know it depends on the game but sometimes like normally they're not open to the public you have to like apply to get approved to, to join these test servers and normally with the test servers they'll push out the, the update anyway unless there's some game breaking glitch that people discover but this normally just speeds up the process for getting things fixed so say Helldivers has a patch going out they'll send it to the test server community will test it they'll be like hey th these are the issues and then that will give the devs time to be like okay we need to get this fixed in the next patch ASAP so they'll still probably push out the the update to everybody but then we'll get like a patch a lot sooner to fix the issues so overall this is potentially a really good idea and this will get a lot of those bugs fixed a lot faster this is one of those things I would consider if I was Arrowhead pushing out before some of the other stuff that they could eventually add. Like the way he talks about this, this this could be like eight months from now or it could be like a year from now for all we know. This would be something I would try to get out sooner <laughs> because this could really, really help this game out a lot. I Again, I don't know how long it would take to get a test server going, but I would definitely try to push this one a little faster than some of the other things potentially. And there's a very dedicated part of this community that loves testing out the weapons and the stratagems and every little thing under the sun. So if we can get access to those players that love to do all that kind of testing, I feel like they'll find glitches and issues pretty quickly. All right, so that's going to do it for today's Helldivers 2 news update. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please give us a like. It helps us out a lot in the algorithm, so we'd really appreciate it. Comment any thoughts you have on any of the topics that we talked about today or anything that you like down in the comments section down below. And if you're new here, please hit the subscribe button and the bell for notifications so you don't miss any future Helldivers 2 update videos. That's going to do it for us. We will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.